Yo, what's going on, E7 fam, as well as Overlord fans? I'm Sue, but feel free to call me Pat. The Epic 7 Cross Overlord collab is bringing with it a lot of new players who may not know what to prioritize during the collab. And, well, for a lot of veterans, many of you guys have been asking me a ton of questions on how best to use Ainz, Albedo, and Shaltir. So, I decided to make a quick video that answers all the things that you could want to know about the collab, whether you're a beginner or a veteran. If you are new though, this video does assume that you have at least some of a basic understanding of Epic 7. So if you are brand new, just starting, I highly recommend watching my 2024 new player guide. It's about 15 minutes or so long, but it will quickly go over almost everything that the game has to offer. I'll link it down in this video's description. If for some reason you don't understand something after this video, or you just have more questions in general about Epic 7 or the Overlord collab, feel free to let me know down in the comments below or hit me up on Discord, which again, my link will be in this video's description. As always, leaving a like or a subscribe would be super appreciated. I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers and it would mean the world to me if I could hit that sometime in the next like couple of weeks or so. Anyways, enough yapping, enjoy the video. Getting started for the Overlord event is pretty easy. Head on over to the side story area from the main lobby and go to the Epic 7 Cross Overlord event on the left hand side. Here, you could read through the story explaining how Ainz and company arrived on Orbis from the Tomb of Nazareth. Once all that's done, you'll get a free copy of Ainz Ulgon and unlock the first of two farmable levels, the Sandstorm Desert. Reading further into the story unlocks the Eerie Underground Ruins. You want to farm Sandstorm Desert at the highest difficulty that you're able to in order to get currency to purchase items under the Overlord's Force tab or the Orbis Treasury tab from the side story's main menu. Overlord's Force contains imprints which strengthens Ainz and makes the event generally easier. You should definitely be prioritizing these first with your side story currency. Orbis Treasury has a few options, Loot Exchange and Epic Equipment Exchange. And once you unlock Eerie Underground Ruins, you'll get a third option in Illustration Exchange. Loot Exchange should be prioritized first as it contains the Staff of Ein Zulgon, which increases the event currency that you get in subsequent runs. Fusing multiple copies of the Staff increases the drops you get, so again, try to pick these up first. Illustration Exchange gives you a cool background to display in your lobby if you're into that sort of thing, and well, it's limited, so if you miss out, that's kind of it. But if you don't care about these kind of things, you can skip it. Epic Equipment Exchange is the real moneymaker, though, of this event. This is currently the best event in the game's history for farming end game gear and helping you catch up quickly. Use all of the stamina that you get daily and the leaves in your account in order to farm points to pick up some sweet loot. If you're unsure of which level to farm, I'm going to suggest Eerie Underground Ruins as the currency you get from it allows you to purchase items of the speed set, which is the universally best set in the game for most characters as of the recording of this video. As for a team to farm the event, it's pretty easy, so you don't really need to worry too much about it. Just make sure to always include Einzel Gon and make sure that he's wearing the staff that comes with the event. If you're farming Desert Sandstorm, make sure you include Albedo with her Artifact 3F if you have it to help make things easier and again, increase your drops. For Eerie Underground Ruins, you don't need to bring Albedo at all. Instead, the game is asking you to bring Shaltir for bonus drops, in addition to her wearing her artifact, Pipette Lance. So if you have her in the artifact, make sure to stick them on your team. As for the other two teammates that you want to bring, I recommend the three-star Terranor Guard. He is a character that's one of the best PvE characters in the entire game, and he's only a three-star. Odds are, when you're rolling for either Albedo or Shaltir, you probably picked up at least one copy of him. Put your best damage gear that you have on him and try to enhance up his skill too. For the fourth slot, I recommend the four star Shuri if you manage to acquire him during your pulls. He will help speed up your runs tremendously due to the fact that he grants combat readiness on his basic skills. Now, let's talk about the Overlord himself, Einzul Gon, as well as the rest of the Guardians of Nazarek, where their best use is and some examples of how you can actually gear them. First up, let's talk about Bone Daddy himself, Einzel Gon. Einz is a character who wants to use his signature move, the goal of all life is death, to inflict the death sentence debuff on a single target. After 12 turns, that target takes 50,000 damage, which is enough to instantly kill 
any character in the game in PvP. As for its PvE applications, it's not amazing in the late game, but 50,000 damage is more than enough to carry you through most of the early game content in Epic 7. Do note that if Ainz dies at any point, Death Sentence goes away, so it's important to build this character as tanky as possible. Now that you know how his kit works, it's pretty straightforward. He's going to instantly kill anything with his ultimate so long as he lives, so damage dealing stats like attack, crit chance, and crit damage are useless on him. Instead, prioritize health and defense so that, that way he stays alive. Ideally, in the end game, you'll want over 1500 defense and over 20,000 HP, but I realize that's not attainable for most new players. Instead, use the free 75 health set that the game gives you early on until you can farm gear from this event that's more useful. Staff of Einzul Gone, which is his artifact, gives both effectiveness and effect resistance. These are stats that you're most likely going to want on this character. Effectiveness helps prevent our ultimate from getting resisted, and effect resistance prevents Einz from being debuffed himself. I recommend going for a mix of both stats, prioritizing effect resistance just a slight bit higher. You can also forego effect resistance entirely if you plan on using him in PvE content. Abyssal Crown and Proof of Valor are great alternative artifact options for this hero if you have them and are really looking to kind of flex the character in PvP. Ainz's best use, as I can tell currently, is for new players in the game mode Abyss, which is some of the hardest content in the game. He's an absolute monster there, destroying most of the game's floors up until around floor 90 or 100, where things get to be a bit more challenging. He's also a fairly solid character for climbing arena, and performs pretty well in Guild Wars most of the time, assuming that he's backed up by a Knight and a Soul Weaver. The main problem with Ainz, though, is that for a character whose lore is based on an amazing PvP player, he's really, really not good in World Arena, which is the game's most popular PvP mode. And that's due to the fact that the goal of all of life is death, is able to be resisted by the game's innate 15% absolute resistance. If this doesn't get changed, he's basically a parlor trick and not really worth playing at the highest level of the game. But who knows, between now and the end of the collab, maybe he gets buffed. It happened in the past with the Full Metal Alchemist collab with Edward Elric. And if that does happen between the time that this video goes live and the collab ends, I will make note of that in a pinned comment down in the comment section. Next up, let's talk about my favorite Overlord character, Albedo. Albedo is a knight who provides the highest critical hit damage resistance in the game. She also boasts solid utility and surprisingly high basic attack damage, at least for a tank. This allows you to have some pretty flexible choices when it comes to her build path. The simplest way to play her is as a pure tank using the 4 star artifact Aureus, which happens to be one of the best knight artifacts in the game and fairly common. From here, you just want to focus on getting as much HP on her as you possibly can, with some solidly high defense to boot. You could also get some effectiveness to help with the defense break on her S3, Rage of Nazarek, or some effect resistance to help her resist debuffs. Protection set is perhaps the most ideal four-piece set on this character for this type of build. It's definitely not the flashiest playstyle for a Guardian of Nazarek, but it's pretty serviceable against aggressive teams in PvP, as well as a lot of early game content, at least until you get stronger options like Unbound Knight Arwell, or perhaps even Crimson Armin. If you do want to play her a bit flashier though and play her as a pseudo DPS or a bruiser, well that's quite a bit more complicated. You'll need her artifact 3F from her banner, and from there you'll need to decide whether or not you want to build her with critical hit damage or not. As I broke down in this video here, Albino doesn't really do well on critical hit stats until she reaches upwards of 27,000 HP. In my opinion, it is a lot easier for you to chase pure HP, but there is a downside to that, and that's that it's incredibly inconsistent unless you have a level 30 copy of 3F. And that means that you need six copies of it, which translates to either getting very lucky, spending a lot of money, or being incredibly patient and waiting several months in order to level the one you already have to plus 30 using Bottle of Knowledges in the shop every several weeks. As for her overall role, Albedo has a lot of success against incredibly aggressive team compositions in PvP. Her Bicorn counterattack in tandem with her 3F artifact could do impressive amounts of damage to them while her Aegis Unfold reduces the overall damage that your team takes. 
You could also use her in standard PvP games if you're fairly confident in her. As of the recording of this video, she is by no means a bad character, but she's not really overpowered, which is what I think a lot of people were hoping for. If somehow that changes between now and the end of the collab, well, as with Ainz, I'll post a pinned comment about it. Finally, let's move on to Ainz's favorite chair, Shaltir Bloodfallen. Shaltir is just releasing as I'm finishing up this video, so there's not a lot of time for me to test her or practice with her. That said, from a glance, she seems to be a glass cannon DPS in the truest sense. Her passive, True Vampire, makes her very difficult to deal with if the enemies don't have any AoE attacks. This means that you can entirely forego health and defense on her. All Shaltir really needs to function is just attack, critical hit chance, critical hit damage, and speed. Her ultimate, Purifying Javelin, removes buffs from an enemy assuming she has more attack than them. And it guarantees that you will land a hit thanks to its 100% extra hit chance. This means that Shaltir is good not only versus dodge units, but blue units which normally most red units in the game would struggle with since they have type disadvantage. All in all, this means that Shaltir is a super easy character to pick up and play. Slap your best damage and speed gear on her, and just start hitting buttons. Her primary use is in PvP game modes where Purifying Javelin can kill dodge base heroes easily, but her skill 1, Summon Household, also gives her some skin in the game against health scaling bruisers. You know, like Albedo. That's not to say, by the way, that for you newer players, you can't use her in PvE content. This character is so simple, strong, and straightforward that I'm fairly confident she'll be able to carry you through pretty much most of your Epic 7 journey until you start making it towards the late game. And that's going to do it for the Overlord collab for Epic 7. If you still have any questions about things to do in the collab or Ainz, Albedo, or Shaltir, again, let me know down in the comments below or again, hit me up on Discord. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.